Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to episode 2 of our Unity Alert System tutorial. The first episode, as mentioned, was basically we're just setting up the scene and I knew some people would want to watch a little blender process that I go through to just set this over here. But now we're going to get into the crux of things. We haven't done any programming or anything like that. Um, and we're going to be working on setting up our initial sort of UI environment this time around. So the first thing I actually want to do is pop over into Photoshop. Of course, you can use Paint, you can use GIMP, you can use uh, Paint.net, which is quite excellent. You can use whatever you want uh, for this because we're really not going to go too fancy. What I want to do is just set up something that we can use as a background for our alerts, something that will look kind of cool. Um, probably something with like a rounded rectangle. Actually, I guess if we're really being inspired by something like Civ 6, what we're going to do is is something like this. In Civ 6, what you have, first of all, we're, we are going to use the rounded rectangle over here. Um, I am going to, I'm just going to, yeah, fill it with white is fine for this because, yeah, there's there's things we can do. I'm going to put no stroke on it. Uh, first, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go and use the paint bucket tool to throw a black background in there so that we will just be able to see a little bit more. Sometimes I feel that hatched interface looks a little wonky. Um, and then the layer above that. We're going to use a rounded rectangle with the white fill, and we'll, we'll come up with sort of a size we're happy with. Um, something kind of like this. Okay, 144 is a, a height. That's good. And I want to remember that because what I want to do is, I guess I could do it as part of the same layer, is I want to switch over and use the ellipse tool, which is how you can make spheres as well if you've got a even ellipse. And so the important thing here with the ellipse is we want to make it with a height of 144. And we'd also like it to be centered which we can do, uh, not with the X, but with the Y. Although, I guess we should have taken note of some of these numbers. If I go and stop, stop that. If I go and go back over here, is there like a, a selection tool for this? There we go. So you are at a Y of 56, and this one here is also at a Y of, wow! Did I really align that properly? I did. Now, I just want to move this over horizontally, such that it overlaps that way. There we go. So that gives you something that's nice that you maybe, like, you can put a round icon over here. You know what? I think this whole thing needs to be squished. Don't you agree? I think... Uh, then I lose my nice roundness, though. Okay, so that's fine, because what I can do... Um, don't apply the transform. Uh, we're going to change the height, after all. I'm going to make this... Um, I don't know, maybe 80 pixels? And then my ellipse over here will also have to be uh, 80 by 80. Excellent, and then we're just going to move it over to the side to overlap that edge. There we go. So now we've got a nice space maybe for a round icon, and then we've got some space for a text. That's what we're going to do. Now we are going to, I'm just going to hide the black background because we don't want that. We also don't need this to be quite as large as it is. Um, I'm going to trim it down a bit. I'm still going to leave some space here for a reason that will become obvious in just a moment. because. Um, this is a good shape, but what I want to do is, I now want to go and add just some effects here. I want to go and add a bit of a bevel to it. Um, built in here. Um, I think chisel hard is fine. Um, I think, you know, quite deep is also okay, but I think I'm going to change the size of it to something like that. That's okay. We could also add a drop shadow in here, which I think is fine. Technically, you can add drop shadow effects inside of Unity as well. But I think it's going to be perfectly okay if we add that here. I don't think we want it quite as distance. Something like that. That's going to be okay. So if we save this, the transparencies and things in here should carry over into Unity, assuming that we have done things correctly. We're going to find out over here. So we've got our alert background. What I want to do is I want it to be used as a sprite for 2D and UI. Apply that. There we go. The transparencies kick in okay. Um, I don't think we have to tune anything as is. It is indeed a single sprite. Um, it's, it does have a bit more of an edge around it than it needs to have. One thing I could do in the sprite editor is look to tighten that up, as long as we don't accidentally um, override the drop shadow. But it might make our life a little simpler if we go and make this a little tighter. Just make sure not to crop out the drop shadow or you might end up looking like it's got a bit of sharp edge in the shadow itself. But if we do something like that, it'll just make our life when we're placing things a little nicer. Oh yeah, so we've got this little thing which is cool. Now, let's let's start working on the user interface. Uh, one thing that you're wanna, gonna wanna do when you start working on your eye, in your scene view, hit this 2D button. 
It'll just lock things in the correct direction for your um, user interface. Of course, if you're working on a 2D game, then you'll probably always have this on. But if you're working in 3D, you'll need to toggle this from time to time. Because now I can't rotate the view around. If I do this, now I can rotate. If I do this, I can't, I'm locked. But the other advantage of being 2D, it assumes you want to be using the rect triangle transform, which is correct for both sprites and UI elements. So now that we've got that, we've got to add a UI um, component at all. What I want to do here, just to clean things up, I'm going to go, I'm going to create an empty. I'm going to make sure that it is centered. And I'm going to call this like, I don't know, game map and, well, you know what, game map, world map. There. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these hexes and just throw them in there. Boop. And then I can go and collapse the world map over there. Very, very nice to use um, game objects, empty game objects, to organize your scene. It's incredibly handy. I recommend it all the time. Um, it does mean that you can't sort of cheat sometimes and use the transform.root to find, like, the parent object if you need to do that for some reason because it'll be returning world map instead of, say, hex. But still it's well 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 worth it okay so now that we've got that we've got to create the user interface so what we can do for this is go game object ui now to have a ui you do need a canvas to exist and an event system to exist but luckily if you add any ui element it will automatically add that in and ultimately what we're doing is we want an area for our for little alerts to show up let's let's start with just asking for an image. So we're going to do that. So again, it creates the event system object over here and it creates this canvas. And if we double click on the canvas, then we get that. Of course, the canvas will be automatically shaped based on our game view over here. And then we've got our image. And so with this image, we're going to assign a sprite, a source image over here. It's got a few built in ones, but we're interested in alert background. So we're going to do that. There we go. So we have this. Now, if we look at it, if we double click on it and zoom in, it looks really derpy. Why is that? Well, because the sprite that was created with a certain size isn't the same size of our image. So what we want to do is we can use... Oh, it thinks it's a sliced image. That's why. It's not. It's a simple image. I set a border, but it's a simple image. I was just using the border to crop. Uh, and then I can hit set native size. Boop. There we go. So now this image is the correct size for this. The problem is it is a little bit huge. But that's okay. We can do all kinds of things. We can decide to scale it, which is probably what we're going to do. Um, because if this were a sprite sprite, if this were not a UI element, we could change the pixels per unit. But that's not going to affect our UI sprite. Because by default, our canvas is trying to be pixel perfect. Constant pixel size. So if the image is 200 pixels wide, then it's going to show up that big over here. We could redo the image in Photoshop to uh, a different standard, which actually is not a bad idea. You often want to avoid too much scaling and things like this. At this case, right now, we have something that's higher resolution than we need. We're going to have to scale it down, which might be okay. The other thing you can decide to do is this image might be perfect if we're full size. Think about it, right? If I hit maximize on play, go, 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 go. There we go. Now, that's pretty good size. It's not in the right place. Um, let me... Let me take this image and say, hey, you're supposed to be glued to, say, the bottom right corner over here. There you go. So you're pinned to the bottom right corner of the screen. So now if I hit play, you'll be there. And all of a sudden looks okay. That looks okay. So we do end up with a very, very, very interesting question. And one of the first things you're going to have to address yourself in almost any game that you make, do you want the pixels to match all the time? So let's say this image is 200 by 50. It's not actually. It's um, 463 by 149. Okay. So this is how many pixels the image is. When you're on a smaller screen, do you want that image to stay at the same size, which is what's happening out? It becomes really obvious. If you pop this out into a window, then it becomes really obvious what's going on, right? If I, if I do this, you have to release the button for the, uh, the canvas to like properly reset its anchors, which is fine. This is not a bug. This is just, that's perfectly okay. Um, you know, do you want this image to keep its pixel size? Because now, if your monitor is only this big, or if you're, it's more important to remember, if your monitor is only running at this resolution, imagine you have a massive, massive monitor, but it runs at a puny, tiny little resolution, which is what this is. This is a resolution of like 800 by 400 or something like that. So you have a huge image, a huge monitor. That means that this image over here would be massive. On the other hand, 
it would be the pixels would be accurate and not fuzzy. The problem with running like at low res is there's not as many pixels to play with. That's option number one though, is keeping this pixel perfect with the understanding that if you're running at low res, the UI will appear huge. The flip side of it is if you sort of design your UI for kind of a middling size, and then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden someone is playing, oh, if the, if the windows popped up, it doesn't actually do the maximize. That's interesting. I did not know that. But then all of a sudden someone is playing on a huge mon or a very high res monitor. There's a risk that UI elements become too small. This is not wrong. This is just one way of the UI working. The way to resolve this, if you want your relative size to be the same, if instead of thinking, I always want this image here to be 400 pixels by 50 pixels, if instead you want to think of it more of, I want this image to occupy about, you know, 5% of the screen's height and about 10% of the screen's width. If you're thinking of it in percentages, then what you want to do is with your canvas selected over here, where it says canvas scalar, instead of constant pixel size, you can change it to scale with screen size, which is probably want. You can also say constant physical size, which I haven't worked with, but would also work out pretty well. Con scale with screen size is pretty nice because one of the things you can do is consider standardizing your user interface for a certain aspect ratio as well. So let's say we want to use our reference resolution of, I don't know. I mean, we could go 1920 by 1080. This is standard 1080p, right? So if we do that, then this looks really puny over here, but we'll look bigger here. But the end result is that um, we're matching width. Um, we might want to match height in this case. So now, whatever percentage, if you look at the height, the total height of this, uh, of this window over here, the percentage that is being occupied by this image will always be the same, at the risk that the font size might be kind of wonky. What is the correct answer? I got, I got nothing for you. There, there's no um, simple answer. It's going to depend entirely on what you're trying to do. I think for my purposes, I think I actually will keep the scale with screen size, which tends to work out mostly okay. Um, mostly okay. And especially if you do this to the point where the UI element feels readable at, you know, let's say 1080p, and then maybe scale your, your view down from time to time to a smaller resolution. Um, wait, I'm thinking the other way around. Make sure that these UI elements are readable at a smaller resolution like this. So when we add some text in here, say right now, um, and so this is like test alert. All right, we're going to do this. I'm going to get it to anchor to say, the entirety of our image um, and be centered, centered like this. And clearly we need to increase the font size. If we make this say 36, now nah, that's going to be too big because we won't have enough room to write things in. If we say, oops, 24, you're like, okay, you know what? This gives us enough room to write more things. We can even write things on a second line. Blah! It's like, okay, yeah, you know, that, that's feeling mostly good. Um, then, and at this tiny little size, that, that font is still reasonable, re readable. It's not great, but we're in a very small resolution and it's still technically readable. And then when we hit play, it's even more readable, but the overall scale is good. So I'm kind of happy with that. Now, our text here, we're gonna wanna make sure as we add more, it, obviously we never want it to go out like this. So uh, the, the thing going on here is this is the actual size of our image here and a lot of it's empty space. We want to make sure that our text only exists within this area here. So what we're going to do, I did set the um, the anchor by holding Shift and Alt and the bottom right corner over here. I told this text element to completely stretch itself out and set the anchors to the four corners. Um, but then we can take this text element and then shrink it down. It'll still be anchored to the four corners, but we can shrink it to make sure we're happy with the way that it fits in here. And we probably want to make sure it doesn't sort of overlap these edges. So something like this should be okay. And then if I go and get rid of all this extra white space I put in, there we go. That seems, that seems reasonable-ish, I think. That's good. And also, actually, what we probably want to do is move this like this so that when we do get a bit of an icon over here, I don't suppose we've got a, do we have like a dummy um, circle? If I go and add a new image in here, um, do we have a circle, right? We have knob. There we go. Knob. Perfect. So this is going to be our, um, 
icon placeholder. We're not actually going to go and draw any of these, but that's going to be okay. I'm going to tell this knob that it's going to be um, anchored and stretched to the left-hand side probably is what I'm looking for. Could be the whole thing, but I think this is going to be okay. Um, you know what? No, you're just going to be centered on the middle, not stretched. There you go. We'll make sure to set native size to start off with, but that is going to be too small, actually, so we will have to scale you up. Um, what were we working with? Like 80 by 80 before, right? There we go. So if we do that, and then we take you and we move you to there... And, oh, just because of the beveling, I think we're going to want to move you up to something like that. That's all of a sudden looking pretty good. So, um, depending on our alerts, we could have different icons for these things. Uh, as, as a dummy sort of test, what I could do... What could I do? I mean, I guess I could make a bunch of, like, dummy images to, to do as an example. But we're going we're gonna to go with this. So, there we go. So, this thing here is our... Um, this is our alert. This whole thing, right? This is a the image that we're using as a background. So the alert object itself over here has an image. That's our background. It has a text component and it has, I guess I could just call it icon. There you go. And it has an icon. There you go. That's the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder here for UI prefabs, right? So we have prefabs, but those are mostly game ones. And I like to uh, prepend everything that has to do with the um, with the user interface itself, I like to have it start with UI. That way it's nicely ordered in my project. So we're going to take this alert and put it in this prefab over here because we are going to want to be able to spawn them on the fly, which means we need them to be a prefab. But not only that, but we will end up in a situation where there's going to be many alerts. And that's what we're going to do now, actually. What we're going to want is we want some sort of um, empty UI element here that is stretched on the right-hand side of the screen. We want it to take up the entire right-hand side of the screen. We want its width to be the same, basically, as our test alert, which that will lock in nicely. We could have verified it, right? L alert width 463, game object width 463. So this is the this is going to be the alert list, okay? And the alerts are going to live within this. And if I just go and Control-D and duplicate, so we're going to end up with something kind of like this as we get more and more and more alerts over here. Um, in fact, I think what we need to do is sort of maybe trim this down, because I think the space is going to be a little too much between these guys, and that's mostly just a question of taking our... What am I looking for? Oh, our image is over here. Alert background. I'm going to go and trim down this sprite to be a bit tighter. Um, actually, I think it's using the entire sprite. I just realized. I'm putting these borders, but it doesn't actually use that. Really? Oh, I did not realize that. I assumed when we did this... It only uses these borders here for the nine slicing aspect. Oh! Well, I just learned something about Unity. Now, that this ability to um, edit a single sprite um, and the nine slice thing, slice thing is relatively new, but I assumed that it would trim this down, but it don't. So, hold on. i got to go back over to the Photoshops here, and i got to do a proper crop here. Um, does it not snap? I thought it would snap. Maybe not. I'm just a little leery about accidentally cutting off the, uh, the background there. But Okay, so I'm going to change this. Save that. Go back in here, and then yes, everything gets a little bit weird. Um, I gotta say, set native size again. Burr. Okay. Oh, it was getting blown up before. Okay, so you're good. There's no weird scaling going on in any of these, right? So that's the native size. So I'm going to go into the canvas. I'm just going to change my reference size um, to, say, 1280 by 720. That's still a 16 by 9 ratio, but gets us, I think, with a slightly more comfortable sort of zoom thing over here. So let me go and fix everything I've just done. So what's the size of this? Okay, I guess the 80s was before. We're actually more like... No, that is 80 pixels high. 
I guess it's because of the scaling aspect. All right, just for my own sanity temporarily, let me go into constant pixel size because it'll make it way easier for me to organize this. The alert, how come it says the height is 49? Is it using... I think it's using this slice, these coordinates after all, in a weird way. Why is it setting the height wrong? How, why is it setting it to 49? That's clearly not the size of the image. It's clearly 98 pixels by 404. Why is it only using half? Is it something to do with the anchor? No. Because now the icon is correctly 80 by 80, and that's right. If I were to go, sorry about this, folks. If I were to go into the UI and just create a new dummy image somewhere else and say, hey, you're supposed to use the alert background and set native size. It's only using half. Despite the fact that I'm back in constant pixel size and everything should be 100% normal. Is it just me or is something really weird going on that doesn't make any sense? Just for the sake of whatever, I'm going to just recreate the canvas from scratch. UI image. Oh! Did it actually take in this units per pixel thing? No. Doesn't make any sense. Hang on. Maybe. That doesn't make any sense because it shouldn't be using it for this. It is! Oh, it's because of the reference pixels per... Ah! 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 Reference pixels per unit is 100. There we go. So it does use that scaling. Ah, right. It only... Okay, so when you change the scaling of the pixels per unit, that's what happened. When I changed that, it didn't make any difference in the images at the time because we were in scale with screen size, which means it doesn't give a crap about those pixel dimensions. But then when you go back over here, it does give a crap about that but I'd already made the change. Okay, my bad about the confusion there, folks. I don't like doing things that might lead people down the wrong rabbit hole. But at the same time, hey, we debugged something that was a little bit weird. So pixels per unit probably want this to match the canvas. It is worth noting that then on your canvas, you can go and tune this afterwards and get absolutely no change instantly, unless I guess until you hit the, um, the set native size, which is a little bit weird. So if I hit it now, nothing will change. If I tell the canvas to do say 50, and then I go to image and say set native size, then it'll do that. Huh. Well, I guess that's the thing. Okay, let me go and rebuild this. So we're gonna create an empty. Um, this is gonna be our alert list. I'm gonna go and tell it to stretch on the right hand side. I will drop within it uh, the alert prefab. Um, this prefab we're going to make sure that the base object is set to native size. Very nice. The icon is set to 8080, which is correct. Um, the text, I, I've got to move it in a second. The text, I'm going to tell it, just verify that you're supposed to stretch everywhere, um, but you are supposed to be sort of indexed like that and like that. And then the icon, we are going to... Try to decide if it should be like a tiny bit lower or not. Something like that. It's it's weird because like, are you centering between the outside of this or with the shadow? I think I'm happy with this. It looks pretty okay. Just gonna make sure the text doesn't overlap the icon, but is actually quite tight against it. Okay, that's looking fine again. So we've rebuilt this to not be all stupid and screwy now that we've got things set up okay. Um, and then you can tweak the scale factor here to get to where you're happy. And that's gonna be nice and easy to work with. So let's say we do that. No, I think that's that's really annoying to... 
Scale to this. 1280. 720. Now I'm very happy with that, suddenly. Now if I go back over here and say set native size, it doesn't break. Okay, this is exactly where I want it to be. So if we hit play, these objects will be probably too big. That's true, they would be. Oh, um, that's because I want you to scale with height. How am I going to be happy? How am I going to be happy? There we go. Something like that. And this will be big, but not too big. Okay, good enough. We're going to start messing with, stop messing with that. We can tune that for ages. We can even put in a bunch of extra logic for different canvas layouts if we decide that we're not happy with a particular resolution. But I'm going to call that good enough for this. Okay, we got that. Just realized one thing we need, do we want like a little X button to dismiss this? Or maybe you can just dismiss it by clicking on it. No, I think when you click on it, you're going to want to like zoom to an event. So I think we need in here just a wee bit of a little close button. And functionally, where do we want this? I think, okay, we're going to put it, I mean, inside of alert over here, but, and it's going to be, we're going to use an image, um, and give me an image that's got, um, yeah, I can just use, say, this, this UI sprite, that's going to be fine, because it's got a little bit of a border around it, but I'm going to shrink this way down, like, 10 by 10, mm, that's too small, 30 by 30, it's probably too big, um, I think 25 by 25, like, I don't think halving it, yeah, see, I'm kind of happy with that, and what I want to do is put it, say, right over here. Actually, technically, it is, oops, it is technically still within the bounds of that image, but there's no reason we can't put it outside as well, but I think that looks okay. We put it in here. I think I like having it sort of just be like that. That's okay. This is going to be the, um, the close button. And we are going to, I'm going to add in UI text. It's just going to be, I'm going to tell it to be there, centered, centered, just be an X. Boom, like that. There we go, a little bit bigger, a tiny scooch bigger. There we go, so this is gonna look like a close button now. That I think looks fine. Now, we don't actually currently have a button script on this, although we could. Like there's all kinds of ways we can respond to the clicks. Probably the simplest thing to do is to add a button script over here. Nice thing about it, it handles some tinting. So if we were to hit play on this and then mouse over that button or click the button, then it tints a little, you get a little bit of feedback over there. And it's really handy to add a click handler. The button script makes it really easy to handle the clicks, although there's no reason you need that. There's a million different ways that you could do that instead. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this. And again, if we were to duplicate this, and put another one up here. So now, now the natural spacing between them feels a lot better and do that. So we can have a whole slew of alerts. Um, but one thing we want to do, if we have a whole bunch of alerts, right, we're not, we're not going to want to hand place these obviously, and they're going to come in programmatically, which means this alert list is actually going to want to have a, um, I guess it would be called vertical layout, vertical layout group like that. Now, first thing I forgot to do is reset the width of the alert list over here. So this should be 404, width not found, like that. And what this will do is automatically arrange all of the objects within it vertically. Okay? Now, there's a few things we can tune. First of all, we want to say that um, you're going to start uh, the lower right. And you, we do not want you to expand. There we go because we're quite happy with the size of our children over here. At no point will this thing be responsible for, for scooching things. So if we go and duplicate, that's good. If we go beyond, then technically it exceeds past this, which is fine, although not very helpful for us if we might want to put in a scroll bar. It depends. It's actually a really good question at this point. Would we want a scroll bar or would we want it to not not necessarily scroll, but just the ability to close it. We've done scroll bars and things like that. I don't think, I don't know. I mean, probably we'd want one. Now that I'm thinking about it, if it gets too big, we probably want a scroll bar to appear over on the right here um, and let you cycle between, like just, just look up and down without having to worry about close thing, closing things. But for now, we'll go ahead and do this. And what you can do is you can close things and that will start to reveal stuff. But we've got this sort of set up, which is great. So as more alerts spawn, this will start to fill out, okay. Very happy with that. 
So I guess this is a great place to put in a cut. We've got our basic UI configuration. Next episode, what we're going to do is we are going to, well, we're going to, now we just program. Um, and what's going to happen is we're going to create a system where one script can register an alert, say, oh, I need an alert that says blah and uses this icon. Although we're going to ignore the icon component of it for this. But the idea is there's going to be a function that any script can call that says, put up an alert with this icon that says this text. And actually, I think it's going to take in a third parameter, which is going to be a link to the game object that is sort of generating this alert. The idea being that if you click on this uh, panel, what it should do, what we would love to do is have the camera look at that object. We may not implement it, but I think that's going to be the, um, the format of the alert function. It's going to, and I, I suppose, like the text is mandatory. The option, the uh, icon maybe is optional. There might be a default icon normally. And then the third thing is the game object to look at if we click on the panel, and that is also going to be optional. Uh, you could easily pass it null. We'll probably have it default as a null because some things you click on doesn't really zoom to anything because it's sort of just a global message about whatever. It's not a message related to a city or a unit or something of that nature. Um, so yeah, there we go. I hope you found this useful. I know that we went a little bit astray for a little bit there, but hey, again, I'm always excited when like, a mistake happens because it's an opportunity for me to learn something and hopefully it'll be something that'll be useful because one day you're going to run into that stupid problem and be like, what's going on? Well, now you know. See you next time, folks. Thank you, all our March Patreon supporters and these mic check supporters. We've got Yuko Finn, Snoopy TRB, Pavel Zdenov, Drazion, Gavin Power, Jan Tori Vell, Michael McClintock, Aaron Doibson, Craig Mortel, the not so evil engineer, Julian Ogilafon, Marys Fieldvold, Speedy Savant, Steven Stager, Valiant, that's probably Stager, I don't know, Valiant Cake Fiend, Jason Yanity, Stephen Bonnerman, Kale the Quick, Neil Blakely, Milner, and everyone who has watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed. Thank you so, so much.